Hey guys, welcome back to Installation 00. This is another Vlor video, and today we're talking about the greatest Spartans in the lore. It does involve exploring a little further into my previous video about multiplayer cannon. If you haven't seen it, link is in the description, and on the card at the top right. Pause the video, head over there, and have a watch. I'll wait. When you're done, meet the rest of us back here. If you have seen it, the, the others will be joining us in a moment. Just hang on, hang on a sec. back good just just join ev everyone else here cheers everyone accounted for right now everyone is here and comfortable let's get on with the video so I was thinking about the Spartans and who the greatest of them is seems like a relatively obvious question until you expand on it a little bit and when you expand on it enough an eye-opening revelation is made so let's break this down into classes the Spartan ones otherwise known as the Orion Candidates. Really, there is only one that is of significant enough reputation and with substantial enough service record to even be considered as the greatest Spartan one. Sergeant Major Avery Johnson. Johnson played a vital role during the course of the Great War and fought at major battles such as Harvest, Reach, Earth, and the events at Installation 04, 05, and the Ark. He was key in forming an alliance between the humans and the Sangali following the Great Schism and the outbreak of the Flood in November 2552. Ultimately, Johnson was killed in an attempt to prematurely activate a replacement halo by 343 Guilty Spark. He was honoured by Fleet Admiral Sir Terence Hood twice, first with the Colonial Cross just prior to the invasion of Earth, and then months later alongside his fallen comrades at the Hillside Memorial in Voi, Kenya. He was best known for his typical gung-ho attitude towards life, personal goals, and as a leader to his fellow Marines. This earned him a reputation, respect, and admiration from his subordinates and superiors alike. Johnson's behavior seems to be eccentric, often delivering outlandish speeches to boost the morale of those serving under him. However, when it came down to it, he was a no-nonsense NCO, who, although caring deeply for his troops, pushed them hard during training. And that pretty much says all it needs to. Now the Spartan twos are considered to be the best of the Spartans, the first class, the most heavily augmented, indoctrinated and trained Spartan class with superior genetics, armor systems, augments, cybernetics, biology, intelligence, and battle prowess. Uh, they are the absolute best of humanity. I'm sure it comes as absolutely no surprise that the absolute best of the Spartan twos is Master Chief Petty Officer John 117. After over 30 years of active duty, he is one of the most decorated war veterans of the United Nations Space Command. By August 30th, 2552, John's career service Vitae recorded 207 ground engagements against the Covenant in which he had participated. By August of 2558, he had completed 209 military operations, including 136 full campaigns, more than any one other UNSC personnel on record at the time. Though John has commanded nearly every Spartan II at one time or another, the lion's share of his career has been spent as fire team leader of Blue Team. His actions during the Covenant War earned him every major UNSC service medal and combat award, save for the Prisoner of War medallion, as well as several dozen civilian honours. He is, hands down, the greatest Spartan, and that cannot be overstated. Just looking at the list of engagements he has been in is a testament to his brilliance. The Spartan 3s. Now, this has been covered extensively by many other Halo YouTubers, and I must agree with many of their decisions that Spartan B312, otherwise known as Noble 6, is the greatest Spartan 3. There are some immensely worthy candidates of the S3s Olivia, Mark, Lucy, Carter, June, Kat, Tom, just to name a few. But the reality is that as a member of Spartan 3 class, Spartans were built to be disposable, meant to engage in suicide missions with high value but equally high cost to lives. You had to be particularly special to stand out 
in the S3 class, enough to be pulled out of the main rank and file and given a suit of Mjolnir, a significant upgrade from the semi-powered infiltration or SPI armor that they were given as standard. And of those who were, only one was given the designation of hyperlethal alongside Master Chief, and that was Spartan B312. Noble Six is remarked to be a skilled assassin and more of a hyperlethal vector than a soldier, as evidenced from Noble Six heavily redacted personnel file. Six has a tendency to go solo, or in other words be a lone wolf during missions. Over the course of B312's career, the Spartan gained a high reputation as an efficient lone wolf assassin, having single-handedly broken organizations and made entire militia groups disappear. B312 was also a test pilot in the top secret UNSC project, the Sabre Program, which resulted in the development of the YSS-1000 Sabre class starfighter. B-312 used these skills to great effect in a counterinsurgency operation on Memor on May 10th, 2552. You don't get taken out of beta class immediately after training and get given opportunities like that unless you're damned good at your job. So without a doubt, Noble Six is the greatest Spartan 3. The Spartan 4s. Now, here is an interesting one. The Spartan 4s are a very different situation altogether. Now, I've trawled through all of the known S4s, and I think I've whittled them down to a shortlist of a, a few viable candidates for the greatest Spartan 4. And they are Vale, Thorn, Palmer, Buck, and Locke. Olympia Vale is a Spartan 4 super soldier of Fireteam Osiris. Vale is an anthropologist and a xenoanthropologist, particularly adept in Sangalian forerunner culture and fluent in Sangali. Following the Human Covenant War, Vale served as a professional diplomat for the United Nations Space Command, specialising in interspecies relations. While most Spartan Fours are recruited from active field duty, Vale is an exception as she was accepted into the programme after excelling in training exercises despite minimal field experience. By August 2558, Vale had participated in seven military operations and two full campaigns. During Operation Sentry, Vail served as an advisor to Region 1 of the UNSC Central Command during negotiations in the Epsilon Irandi system with the Covenant fleet remnants at Tribute. She participated in Operation Atlas Vigilance, an aborted only mission that involved securing shipmaster Ori Sumai at Salia 3 in the Salia system. Vail also briefly commanded Fireteam Stingray, an ad hoc intelligence enabling group that participated in Operation Ocean Raptor, a location redacted by Oni. By October 2558, Vale had become a member of Fireteam Osiris, led by Jameson Locke, and also consisting of Spartans Edward Buck and Holly Tanaka. Fireteam Osiris was charged with carrying out a variety of complex missions for the UNSC Security Council and High Command. Gabriel Thorne is a Spartan IV super soldier and a member of the UNSC Infinity Spartan contingent. In early 2558, Thorne was assigned as the newest member of Fireteam Majestic, the team being deployed aboard UNSC Infinity in February, and was shortly thereafter directly involved in the Requiem campaign, playing a pivotal role in the mission critical objectives and its eventual end. Sometime after the Requiem campaign, Palmer transferred DeMarco to Fireteam Bailey and put Thorn in command of Fireteam Majestic. Thorn and the rest of Fireteam Majestic were deployed alongside Fireteams Colossus and Fenrir to repel an attack to the Infinity and prevent the freighter Pilgrim's Pride from self-destructing on the ship. Leading the Fireteams, Thorn ordered Teams Colossus and Fenrir to secure the ship while Majestic made their way to its core. As the Spartans advanced through the freighter, they encountered automated defence turrets with the enemy going into retreat, the freighter was tugged out into space where Grant ejected the ship's core before it exploded. The Spartans survived the detonation and requested extraction. Sarah Palmer was born on Luna on April 13th, 2527. Despite their proximity to the home planet, the parents harboured a strong dislike for the UNSC. Palmer did not share their parents' view and would later join the Marines, eventually serving 12 tours on 8 worlds and as an ODST. Palmer was considered a great asset by Oni 
Due to her physical prowess and innate leadership, she saw her fair share of action against the Coven as an ODST, until in 2553 when she was approached by June to join the Spartan 4 branch. As a Spartan 4, she saw numerous engagements and rapidly established herself as the commander of the UNSC Infinity Spartan contingent. Edward Buck was born in 2510 in New Albany, Lombard on Draco 3. In 2528, when he was 18, he enlisted in the UNSC Marine Corps and trained on Earth and Reach, following it through as a career. One of his first battles would be at Madrigal, following which he would participate at the Battle of the Great Bear. He would then go on to fight during the Harvest Campaign at Utgard in 2531, and later in 2532 Buck would go on to ODST training and then fight at the Battle of Vodin. Despite his ODST training, he would go on to fight as a regular Marine through the Battle of Charybdis IX and at the Battle of Alluvian. In 2545, Draco III was destroyed by the Covenant Empire. He was devastated to learn of the loss of his friends and family. That year, he would officially join the ODSTs and would go on to fight at the Battle of Sargasso and at Bounty. He was present during the Fall of Reach and the Battle of Earth, where he saw some of the worst action during the entire Covenant War. Post-war, he was eventually convinced to join the Spartan 4 branch, receiving his augmentations and entered service as a Spartan. Buck became temporary Spartan commander of the UNSC Meriwether Lewis. He would later transfer to the UNSC Infinity, and by October 2558, Edward Buck had been assigned to the Spartan 4 fire team Osiris under the command of Jameson Locke of Oni. Jameson Locke is a Spartan 4 super soldier and former Office of Naval Intelligence agent. Prior to becoming a Spartan, Locke had risen to the rank of Lieutenant Commander and served under Oni Section 3 as an acquisition specialist. His duties including the retrieval of important objects from the enemy as well as tracking and assassination of high value individuals. On September 26, 2552, Locke compiled a target profile concerning Supreme Commander Thel Vadami, detailing the Sangeli's personal history from the UNSC's first known encounter with him on the rubble to the glassing of Reach. Locke concluded the report by recommending the immediate termination of Vadami if the Covenant advance were to be slowed in any significant manner. In 2556, Locke was selected to become a Spartan IV and underwent the augmentation procedures leading dangerous and highly sensitive operations throughout the former outer colonies, Locke was often tasked with missions beyond the reach of UNSC support and has garnered an impressive and successful career in the field. By October 2558, he had been assigned to lead Fireteam Osiris, comprised of Spartan Fours Olympia Vale, Edward Buck and Holly Tanaka. Fireteam Osiris was charged with carrying out a variety of complex missions for the UNSC Security Council and High Command. This eventually led to Osiris being reassigned to hunting down Blue Team after they went absent without leave. Now, of all the Spartan Fours that reach what I would argue is the shortlist for the most accomplished Spartan Four operatives, none of them rank specifically as the best. Buck gets tantalizingly close, but that's as much to do with his career as an ODST and Locke, while accomplished, still doesn't quite take the crown as the best Spartan 4. But I've left one Spartan 4 out of this shortlist. This Spartan was deployed in 2558 where they dropped behind enemy lines and assisted marines in neutralizing an entrenched Covenant force in the area. They were tasked with interrupting the establishment of numerous Covenant strongholds and dismantling enemy cohesion by means of destroying fortified communication systems while under heavy assault. They captured a Forerunner Power Relay Station, occupied by Covenant forces, and were tasked with destroying all enemy forces that were occupying it. They've disabled Forerunner Power Generators whilst behind enemy lines and suffered a communications and telemetry failure due to signal jammers, and were ambushed immediately afterward, but managed to eliminate the hostiles and disable the signal jamming systems. They recovered a Forerunner Artifact while under heavy hostile engagement, they rescued a scientist research team who had been ambushed by Covenant forces and extracted a pinned down marine detachment after fighting back waves of Covenant forces and a flight of phantoms attempting to bolster forces with Sangeli zealots. 
They were shot down during extraction by anti-aircraft turrets and were forced to take out the turrets under heavy Promethean resistance before another extraction could be attempted. They were later tasked to eliminate Sangeli terrorists, generator defence for UNSC forward operation bases. They were captured and held in Covenant Detention Centre, later escaping due to a well-placed distraction. They captured a Covenant Phantom and used it to infiltrate a secure Covenant facility and retrieved vital intelligence from the computers there. The intelligence showed information for Covenant Plasma Depots, which they managed to destroy. They helped defend borders when the UNSC Infinity was attacked. They were tasked with recovering a Tier 1 asset and, although unsuccessful, dealt a fatal blow to the command structures of the Covenant Remnant, as well as inflicting heavy losses for the Covenant and Prometheans. During the end of the Covenant War and the years of conflict that followed, this Spartan is estimated at being responsible for the death of the equivalent of a division of Covenant numbering some 10 to 25,000 troops, and the equivalent to a regiment of Promethean forces numbering another 1 to 5,000 units, totaling approximately 30,000 kills, though this is also likely a conservative estimate based on observed kill count and known forces within their area of effect at any given time. Their years of active combat are still only single digits, so it's suspected with the passage of time, this Spartan seems to be on the trajectory to attain the rating of a hyperlethal vector, counting them amongst only two others with the same rating. This sets this Spartan as one of the most deadly Spartan fours, and amongst the upper echelons of the Spartan branch altogether, capable of destroying practically any forces they face, and ability to accomplish nearly every single mission objective they are tasked with. They're capable of near unparalleled reconnaissance, intelligence gathering, force amplification and both offensive and defensive strategy. While under extreme pressures of time or heavy resistance from opposed forces, they have continually proved themselves to be devastatingly effective as a combat unit and an invaluable asset to the Spartan branch and the UNSC at large. Who is this Spartan? This Spartan is you. You. The missions you undertook as a member of Fireteam Crimson during the Requiem campaign. The war game simulations you have trained in, the action your Spartan as seen aboard Infinity since the arrival at Requiem to the arrival of the Created has all set you, your Spartan, as the greatest Spartan 4. This is possible due to the fact that since Halo 4 and multiplayer being given an in-universe explanation alongside Spartan Ops, all the war games that have been played since Halo 4 in 2012, right up until now in 2019, for over seven years, solidifies you as one of the greatest Spartan fours. In truth, it makes every single one of us, in a sense, an invaluable asset for the UNSC. How's that for breaking the fourth wall? Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below and I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patron, Miguel Lopez, holder of the mantle. If you like Halo Law discussed in insane levels of detail, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. If you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more time for me to put into this content and other Halo-related goodness. Take it easy, Spawn.